Cast your minds forward to what you think 2024 is going to be. 128 cores? 256 cores? Will we finally hit 10 gigahertz? DDR6? CXL? Who knows? What I can tell you is that IBM has already got its 2 nanometer chip in production. What's your minimum specification? So before we start talking about IBM's 2 nanometer chip, I want to speak about the whole nanometer ordeal. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, process nodes are typically given the name of nanometers. So we had 90 nanometer, 60 nanometer, 45 nanometer, 28 nanometer, 14, 10, 7, 5, and the list goes on. And we've seen robots all the way down to 1.4 nanometer. Now, Back in the early days of semiconductor design, uh, transistors were planar. They were flat on the silicon, and the number referred to essentially how close you could pack those transistors. It was to do with uh, minimum wire distancing at the time. So as process nodes got smaller, we were able to pack those uh, tra transistors together, denser, and uh, do more per unit area. Now, when Intel moved to 22 nanometer, it introduced its first generation FinFET technology. No longer were the transistors planar, we actually built them out of the silicon in a 3D format. As transistors get ever smaller, one way to achieve this is to get tighter control by having the gate wrap around the channel as much as possible. This is Intel's new 3D transistor. With the 3D transistor's architecture, we replace the flat two-dimensional stream with one or more three-dimensional fins. The control is on all three sides of each fin, rather than just one as in the planar transistor. We call this a tri-gate transistor, and its real advantage over planar is the ability to operate at lower voltage with lower leakage, providing an unprecedented combination of improved performance and energy efficiency. And then 14 nanometer had its second generation. We then saw TSMC and Samsung uh, come in with FinFETs for their 16 14 nanometer processes. From that point on, the naming got a bit skew if. So it went down from 14 to 10 to 7 even though the actual dimensions of the transistor haven't gone down from 14 to 10 to 7. The idea is that the name kind of reflects the effective planar transistor and not the actual transistor involved. This is why, why we're in a situation where you know one company's 7 nanometer is about equivalent to another company's 10 nanometer. There are different parts of the transistor that you could call 10 nanometer or 14 nanometer or 7 nanometer. Actually, um, Intel's 14 nanometer, if you look at some of the uh, line thicknesses, um, some of the protective barriers are as small as 8 nanometers. So why aren't we calling that 8 nanometer, for example? Because that's the smallest feature that uh, we can measure through scanning electron microscopy. The point is, it's all got a bit skew if, and uh, one way to do that is through uh, transistor density. So this is talking about how many millions of transistors can you fit in a tiny square millimeter. This gives us more of a benchmark of kind of where we are in terms of process node scaling. So current Intel 10 nanometer, TSMC 7 nanometer. And then I thought I'd just make a little bit of news this morning and tell you um, that um, as we talked about before, we said we would be shipping our first 10 nanometer codename Cannon Lake parts just before the end of the year. We're actually, we actually did that. So we started shipping our first 10 nanometer codename Cannon Lake parts just before the end of the year and we're on schedule to be ramping throughout 2018, as we said previously. They're around the sort of 100 million transistors per square millimeter mark. And uh, future nodes from both companies are saying, you know, 1.7x density increase, 1.5x density increase. And this is kind of where we get to IBM on two nanometer. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ian, IBM doesn't manufacture chips. Why are they saying they have two nanometer? Well, IBM is a research facility. You may have seen recently that Intel announced it was going to do a collaboration with IBM. It's in my video talking about Intel's IDM 2.0, which you can find in the link here. What they do as a research partner for Samsung and now for Intel is essentially develop, license, and patent technologies that can be used in the manufacturing process. IBM is a world leader in uh, patents being issued for process technologies and all sorts of other patents as well. I think they're, they're on a march of you know several thousand patents a year, maybe even five figures by now. But the point is that's a big part of uh, the company as a whole is simply just research. So they did research into seven nanometer, into five nanometer, into three nanometer before everybody else even thought about implementing it in an actual product. 
And today, IBM is announcing that they've created their first 2 nanometer chip. Now, how are they classifying it as 2 nanometer? They didn't really say by what metrics they're classifying it as 2 nanometer, but they did give, give us some density numbers. They said 50 billion transistors in an area the size of your thumbnail. I asked exactly what size thumbnail is because thumbnails can be big, small. Uh, you know, small as 50 square millimeters, large as 250 square millimeters if you're a giant. They came back and said 150 square millimeters, which puts the, uh, the transistor density at about 333. Uh, million transistors per square millimeter and if we look at the table of what current process nodes do we'll see that that's a sizable jump here's my table from my article at Anantec so with IBM 2 nanometer at 333 million uh, transistors per square millimeter TSMC 3 nanometer is meant to be around 292 uh, its current 5 nanometer is 171 7 nanometer 91 Intel is saying 237 for its 7 nanometer process and then numbers for Samsung roughly mirror that from TSMC. Now, it should be noted that this is peak transistor density. So this is cur currently used for the non-frequency critical parts of the chip. When you have a chip that has logic which requires high frequency, you don't use the most dense transistor libraries because they have too high a thermal density. Typically, they're about half as dense as the peak quoted trans transistor density. Also, different fabs actually have different counting methodologies for their transistor density, depending on uh, how many flip-flops and other sort of transistor type um, structures are actually on the die. So these numbers are roughly in the same area. We've seen some predictions from IC Knowledge, I think, which are actually about 10% higher than the official quoted values. But this is at least a good ballpark uh, to consider where this is coming from. So this two nanometer chip, two, nan two nanometer wafer, they created a 300 uh, millimeter 12 inch wafer uh, with two nanometer chips. The chip is essentially a vehicle for lots of different transistor designs, so they can check to see how they all work. Uh, you've got you know different variations in say power rails in SRAM size. They wouldn't tell us our their SRAM cell size, unfortunately. Um, they said they've got multiple VT devices, plus minus 200 um, millivolts. I'll link down to a couple of papers. They're the first with um, bottom dielectric isolation. And if we actually look at a picture of the transistors that they provided to us, it shows that the 2 nanometer from IBM is using uh, nanosheets technology, or gate all around um, transistors. We call them GAFETs, GAA GAFETs. And... Uh, IBM's three nanometer designs also had uh, these gate all around designs and compared to the current founders on the market we suspect Intel is going to be uh, using uh, nano sheets at five nanometer Samsung is going to be using them at three nanometer and it looks like TSMC is going to be using them at two nanometer so there's a bit of variation in the industry um, Intel seems to be you know kind of on the whole nanometer naming at least um, as early as possible, same with 22 nanometer, they were first to FinFETs back in the day. Nanosheets are the way forward. They're a lot better than FinFETs in the sense that you can tailor your transistors to the right uh, voltage and response you need. Whereas current transistor, current FinFETs designs, you're having to deal with discrete numbers of transistors. With uh, nanosheets, you can vary the size and get a more continuous um, response rather than individual discrete responses uh, for anybody who follows transistor design. Uh, this uh, chip was fabbed in their Albany plant in New York. This is where IBM does a lot of their research. I actually now have an open invitation to go visit uh, the fab that they have there, the research fab at Albany. Um, when we get traveling again, I definitely want to go do that because just north of there is Malta for Global Foundries and their Fab 8 uh, leading edge process node. I've still got an open invite to go there. And then, you know, just slightly uh, southeast of that is uh, Wilton, Connecticut. That's where ASML build uh, EUV machines. So I'd also like to go visit there. In terms of performance of these two nanometer chips, IBM is claiming a 45% performance increase at the same power as 7 nanometer or a 75% power decrease at the same performance against 7 nanometer. I asked exactly how they're going about calculating these numbers and they just say industry standards they won't go any deeper than that unfortunately though i really would like to you know have a look to see exactly how they're calculating that in speaking with one of the chief engineers over at ibm uh, he said in terms of this technology actually coming to market well it depends on partner licensing and patent and you know deployment it's still very much a 300 uh, millimeter wafer technology right now 
he says that uh, they'll be working with partners soon and look to a potential deployment in late 2024. In terms of actual product and high volume manufacturing, you might think around 2025. Uh, so this is a t kind of timescale for these things. Um, if you're ever wondering how far out companies do their manufacturing uh, design, four or five years is actually a good number for that sort of pathfinding. Not the immediate next node, maybe not the node after, but definitely the node after that is in that sort of five to seven year time frame. And companies like IBM are doing a lot of the research on that front. They obviously have a lot of uh, collaboration in academia, especially and uh, some you know some private collaborations as well and if you ever want to find out you know what kind of is the stuff on the leading edge of this uh conferences like iedm isscc they're really good for research papers into the next generation of uh, technology design i mean we're still dealing with uh, silicon transistors here uh, we still haven't covered you know three five transistors 2d transistors and what could be coming after silicon uh, for this uh, transistor, for these two, ten two nanometer transistors, actually, uh, they did say that they're now using EUV on pretty much every part of the process. So front end of line, middle end of line, and back end of line. Uh, what this means is more EUV uh, means that the features are more well defined, which means that they can increase the transistor density as well. Uh, they did say that it's still single patterning EUV. Now, if you follow uh, FinFET and uh, DUV process node technology, you'll know that we're in you know, double patterning and quad patterning and all those sorts of technologies have helped elongate pre-EUV technologies. We still have that to go and for EUV 2 nanometer, we're still on single patterning. So imagine what quad patterning on EUV might bring. So if you go look at, so on the right, that's, or on the left, that's how we used to print an X, right, on a chip. So the optical wavelength let us resolve, it's 130 nanometer, we can resolve a little lower than that, you print an X. But as you know, we kept printing this finer and finer. And it turns out when you start printing finer that, the light literally interferes with itself, which is kind of a drag, but it turns out that's a transverse function you can calculate. So the mask actually prints something different. So when it interferes with itself, you get an X on the chip. And that was, to be honest, was getting wigglier and wigglier. And on the right, what was happening not too long ago in 2014. The thing you had to print to get an X was getting more complicated because the thing you're printing was much smaller in a wavelength of light. And there's you know, a million physicists working on this. So, and here's kind of what happened. So the world believes we shrunk transistors by having the wavelength of light get smaller. And at some point it kind of tapped out. And then between 2007 or eight there, in 2018 or 19, right? They were using all kinds of tricks to get the devices to keep shrinking, right? And then we invented the UV and started bringing on that, that online. And if you do the math, we were just discussing it this morning, the 193 nanometer allowed us actually resolve to 80 nanometers without much trick. The 13.5 resolves to eight. 80 squared over eight squared is 100X. Does everybody know that? Was that a big news in the newspapers? Is that EV machines is enabling a 100x shrink of transistors? That was the fine print under Moore's Law is dead, right? So the, so here we are in 2020 printing X's like they were meant to be printed. They're just X's. Now, there's a lot of room to go shrink the light and then there's room to do all the tricks because optics works and interference is a thing. And you know, we'll do all those things. But at a whole bunch of other dimensions of this, we'll do it. So what's my minimum specification here? I have asked IBM if I can take a bite of the wafer. They have not answered. I would have to go visit to find out. If you stay tuned, there'll be a cat tax at the end, but I need to give a big thanks to all the patrons who make this video possible. If you feel like donating, then uh, patreon.com slash tech tech potato it really does help out and i really love all of you who do if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't you know leave a comment down below and let me know what you think either way two nanometer what do you think